Once you've got all your home gym essentials, it's time to start looking at specialty bars, which are the best way to expand the possibilities of your gym without taking up a lot of space. There are a lot of options out there, and I own more than any normal person should, so today we're going to talk about which bars I bought and in what order in the hopes it helps you avoid mistakes like this one on your home gym journey. Why specialty bars? Well, for one, you can only buy so many Olympic bars before your wife starts questioning why you keep purchasing the same thing, which by the way is one, they all look the same to her. But with specialty bars, you can spend nearly unlimited amounts of money purchasing such strange contraptions that she won't even want to ask. But in reality, they allow us to add more versatility to our training, which helps keep working out at home interesting, which can be difficult given our limited space and options versus a commercial gym. They help to avoid injuries or assist in rehabbing through them, and for some of us, they're literally the only way. We can complete certain movements because of our own limitations, and they're also just a great way to address weaknesses and build strength. I should note, this isn't necessarily the order I'd purchase these if I did it again, just the order I originally did it in and why. Obviously, I'm not you, and your training style and needs will be different, so adjust accordingly. Or buy everything I say, and that way I can quit my real job and become a YouTube celebrity, which I don't really know what that is, but it sure sounds better than being a contributing member of society. And as always, let me know in the comments your recommendations, that way I can steal your advice and pawn it off as my own. Or let me know the order you'd purchase your bars in because others could use that advice and knowledge to help with their own home gym purchases. And yes, I absolutely could do all of these movements without specialty bars. I can press without a multi-grip, deadlift without a trap bar, work on my arms without a curl bar, and I sure as hell can skip leg day without any bars at all, but I'd probably just end up looking really excited in my empty shed gym. Everyone knows my first specialty bar purchase was a curl bar, and after having one for years, I can say I don't regret that decision. Of course, your first purchase may vary based on your training, but for me, this was a cheaper investment than a lot of the options we're about to talk about. And of course, back then, we didn't have all the options that we do now. So when I was looking for some variety in my training and trying to take some pressure off my joints, it made a lot of sense. Sure, if you want to use that dirty science stuff, fuck nerd. You can debate which bar is more effective for the strength and size of the only muscle on your body that actually matters. And the fact that a straight bar allows you to supinate more is probably what you'll quote you read on some blog, and I won't argue that, but I will say I highly value the fact that a good curl bar helps to alleviate stress in the wrists and elbows, which is a big reason I've been able to work out for years without issue. And personally, that's a big reason I use all my specialty bars. My goals are long term, and this is a lifestyle that only pays off with consistent hard work over a long period of time. So which curl bar do I recommend? If you're budget shopping, I'd probably watch my After the Essentials video, which I'll link in the description, where I talk about some cheaper options and contradict a little bit of what I'm about to say here. But my favorite curl bar is made by Rogue. What do I mean by that? Well, now that I own the world's most expensive curl bar, which I don't really recommend because at this price it would have to be basically beyond perfect, I have decided that I don't really like the broken up neural patterns that this bar and others like reps options, whether they're rackable or not, have. They're great bars and they still work. And I'm not saying any of Rogue's options at almost $100 more are gonna get you any better results, but I wanna put my hands wherever I want on this shaft and those knurling spots a lot of curl bars have irk me a little, especially at those higher prices. I'm more forgiving at lower prices, and reps bar is the better budget choice, but I spare no expense for these arms, and in my opinion, Rogue's is the best option for a home gym. My e-coated version looks great after years of use, though you could upgrade as they do a great job with their Cerakote as well. I bought a multi-grip bar as my second specialty bar because I enjoy benching, but also because I had some shoulder issues from back in the dark days when my best friend talked me into trying out CrossFit, which you're probably familiar with because the highlight and fail videos are one and the same. That's a joke, the highlight fail part, not the shoulder injury, that was legit. My first multi-grip bar I got back when I moved here was a flat bar because back then we didn't have all the options we have now living in the golden age of home gyms. But since then, I've become a very big fan of cambered bars because I enjoy the balance that camber provides so I can focus on loading up the weight 
rather than stabilizing the bar. Of course, the trade-off of that camber is that cambered bars tend to really only be useful in vertical movements like benching or rowing. I primarily use my multi-grip bars in pressing variations as an alternative to a barbell and as a way to relieve some stress in my joints. They allow me to add volume to my workouts while protecting my shoulders, and the various grips allow for more diversity in my training. Who am I to recommend you a multi-grip bar? Listen, I created an entire YouTube channel that takes up more time than my actual job just to justify my home gym purchases. So sure, maybe I'm not that smart, but I've probably spent more on these bars than you did your entire gym, which actually probably doesn't help my case. But anyway, here's my recommendations. If you're on the fence a little bit, I'd probably wait for our huge cambered multi-grip bar showdown video, which we're gonna compare all these options, Rogue, both the narrow and wide variation, Rep Fitness, Bells of Steel, Titan, Kabuki, and who knows what else I'll have purchased by then. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. But if you're like every other single person on the internet and you wanna spend money now, well, I've reviewed a lot of these bars. And I've also created a playlist of them, which I'll link in the description, probably somewhere near those affiliate links, you know, in case you wanna help me help you. My budget recommendation goes to Rep Fitness with their cambered Swiss bar. I find it to be an upgrade over Titan's bar, which you probably can't even see back here, with the chrome sleeves, removable eye hook, and the fact that it fits better in various size racks. My high-end pick, at least until we see if it can compete with Rogue's narrower version of the MG4, is the Kabuki Rogue collaboration on the Cadillac bar. It's expensive and probably a bit overpriced, but works very well. But before purchasing any of these bars, I'd recommend watching a few reviews on them. And by that, I mean mine. The third bar I bought was a deadlift bar, but I'm gonna be upfront with you. I really only bought it because the smaller shaft diameter works better for my baby-sized hands, and the additional whip and bend of one makes you look like more of a real man when using it. But in reality, my reasons are gonna vary from yours. And I'm not sure it's a bar I'd recommend most people get so early on, but it's in this video for a few reasons. That is, besides the fact that this is the order I purchased my bars in. The first reason I got this bar is simply because I wanted it. And remember, you're building your home gym for you, not because of what some idiot on the internet says. And the second reason is I got this from Rogue's Boneyard. So shipped to me, it was just over $200. And if you can get an item that you're gonna get a lot of use out of for that kind of money, then I'd say it's worth it. Now, you could debate that there's better deadlift bars out there and I wouldn't put up much of a fight, but this deal was too good to pass up and I love this bar. We also needed another aggressively knurled bar so that we could create multiple lifting stations because we work out in a group. And as much as I wish I could say, it's because I didn't wanna load and unload the plates from their puny lifts, but I don't wanna lie to you. I always say one of the big aspects of your success is your partner. They're who watches you, keeps you honest, and pushes you. And Winnie is my Franco Colombo. So the truth is, this bar worked for us in our situation, which means it checked off all the reasons I'd want a specialty bar. But again, you've got to pick what works for you. Trap bars are the pinnacle of specialty bars because they take up a ton of space and you'll rarely use them, but influencers and reviewers will tout the dozens of ways in which you can, even though you and they will never actually attempt them. Are you supposed to be selling the idea of this bar? These things are amazing. Let me show you the dozens of ways you can use them. They'll change your life. Trap bars are a popular alternative to a barbell deadlift since it applies less stress to your lumbar spine. And that's because you're inside the bar, so the weight is closer to your center of gravity, which allows your torso to be in a more upright position versus a traditional deadlift where the weight's out more in front of you. Learning the trap bar is also much easier because it's a less technical lift, but the hinge technique a trap bar teaches still transfers over well to the barbell deadlift. Getting into position is simple because you're not worried about various cues to limit spinal flexion or scraping up those gorgeous legs. And if you're not into powerlifting, you could debate the need to barbell deadlift at all. I mean, I don't because this is the internet and people have really strong opinions about literally everything, but let me know in the comments your thoughts on the necessity of a traditional deadlift. But the best part of a trap bar is you can lift more with them because of the position they put you in. So just tell your friends and everyone on the internet you deadlift 500 pounds and leave out the part about it being on a trap bar. Nobody needs to know. 
when it comes to selecting a trap bar, I'd get a rackable one with multiple sets of handles because they're more versatile. And the ability to rack it adds some options to your workouts as well. I'd probably choose an open design over a closed design because of the convenience of the built-in jacks and they also allow for more variety in your training, but my budget recommendation is still a closed design with Titan's rackable trap bar because it's very difficult to beat for the price. Just remember when buying from Titan to follow one of my two rules. One, only buy things when they're on sale, which is pretty much all the time. Or two, buy things like this from the scratch and dent section because it's probably how it's gonna arrive anyway. As for an open option, I'd probably wait to see how Rep's new bar performs, which we will be reviewing, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. But I'm sure you did earlier, right? Because you wouldn't make me ask twice, would you? Although there are some really great high-end options like Kabuki Strengths or Alikos, I have a hard time recommending people to spend more than twice the money on a trap bar. And Rep has been on such a roll lately that I have a feeling that their bar might end up being the best option for the majority of us. I'm not entirely sure when I got my first safety squat bar, but I am sure it's one of my least favorite specialty bars. Not only because I hate squatting, wait, no, that probably is the only reason, which is why I put it last. I use my SSB for two main reasons. One, as an alternative to a barbell squat where I address my weakness in the exercise, which is in my bracing during the movement. As a low bar squatter, as my form breaks down, sometimes I'll round my back a little bit, which has led to some aches and pains. Since the camber of these bars pushes the weight forward some, it really forces me to brace better and focus on my core stabilization. Two, I push myself really hard when I work out, and things like bench and dips and a lot of other exercises can wear on you after years of doing them. So a safety squat bar gives your joints a day off by moving you from that grip of your squat to a more comfortable position in front of you. They don't make things any easier and being humbled isn't always a fun experience. So you'll be just as miserable as when you barbell squat since they really hammer the quads, upper back, and posterior chain. Three, let's be honest, the best part about leg day is when you're done. You're keeled over on the ground and you know this is the furthest possible moment from when you've got to do it all over again. But to get to that point, unfortunately, you do have to do more than just squat, and a safety squat bar can help add variations to your workouts as well. They're great bars for doing things like jam presses or good mornings, but I mostly use mine for two additional exercises. Lunges have been a staple of my leg workouts for many years, and they're, in my opinion, the largest contributor to the cake factory we've got here. And I know the channel has a lot of Winnie fans who politely inflate her ego about having the second biggest booty in this place. And I appreciate the kindness you've shown her, but I could probably count on one hand the amount of booty specific workouts we've ever done. So where does it come from? I always try to keep our workouts interesting, but simple. So the foundation of our leg days are always squats and heavy walking lunges. The issue? Winnie lunges a pair of 65 pound dumbbells now and I'm lunging close to my body weight, which can be a lot of weight to hold on to, which is where the SSB comes in at times. The other exercise we do quite often is Hatfield squats, the only leg exercise I enjoy because you get to use your arms and you can also just keep adding plates. But that's just our most common uses and there are quite a few more. And any bar that adds more versatility to your home gym is a win in my book. As for which bar do I recommend, that's been made much easier lately with Rep's version, which in my opinion is the best affordable option for a safety squat bar. If you want to learn more about this bar or any of these bars, I'd recommend checking out our comparison video where we talk about the best options for a budget SSB, which I'll also link below with a lot of the other reviews we talked about today. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to help boost us on the algorithm. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.